Hi, and welcome back. I'm Willow Grace. Thank you for joining me as we take a look ahead at your astrology forecast for the month of May. Now, before we begin to talk, start talking about astrology, if you're interested in working with me, you can visit my webpage. You can schedule a tarot and or astrology consultation there. You can also learn and participate by signing up for one of my classes or workshops. If you would like to receive your monthly astrology update by email, you, you can find that information at willowgracemystic.com. If you would like to receive these updates when they first come out, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel below. So now let's dive in. Pisces, we begin the month of May with a beautiful stellium of planets, Neptune, Jupiter, Mars, and Venus, all working in unison in the watery and intuitive sign of Pisces. So with Jupiter, the planet of gifts and expansion, Venus, the planet of love and values, collaborating with driven Mars and dreamy Neptune, this is about blessings and abundance. Together, this planetary energy is used to help you find your purpose and your drive, to really see what is needed to manifest your dreams into a reality. And this is in your first house of self. How do you look? How do you act? How do people see you? How do you want to be perceived? How do you dress? This is the physical appearance of you. And this all of this energy is going into all about you, changing who you are, presenting yourself out there, accepting what's going on with you. Then, ooh, beginning on May 10th, Mercury is going to station retrograde. It's going to be here through June 3rd. Mercury is the planet that rules technology, travel, communication, and Mercury is going to start its backward dance in the sky in the air sign of Gemini. Here, the communication is going to be very, very important. It's about taking your ideas and reworking them, revisiting old projects that you put off and finishing them, taking the time to complete these tasks. And this is in your house and home and mother roots family foundation. And so while you're working on that, then Mercury is then going to go a little bit further back and it's going to move into the earthy sign of Taurus. This is where you're going to use the influence of this centered earth energy to take your thoughts and create them into something that's solid and stable. You might start uh, revisiting some concrete practical aspects of your lives to get to the root cause, which is thinking and communication patterns. That's the focus. And so the Taurus theme is neighbors, siblings. Um, this is also technology and a short distance travel. And so you're going to be reworking, re I would say going back and finishing some projects that you haven't finished. If you started a journal or a book or something, um, something that you've created and, and now you need to go back and, oh, I found it in the closet and now it's time to finish it. All right. For more on Mercury Retrograde, you can always visit my website, willowgracemystic.com, because I wrote a blog on Mercury Retrograde, reviewing, re rethinking, revisiting, and it has a survival guide on it. All right. So next, on May 11th, on May 11th, uh, the great benefic of Jupiter, it moves back into the cardinal sign of Aries. It's going to be here until Oct um, yeah, October 28th. Jupiter is the great teacher. It, it wants to help us grow in ways that magnifies our awareness and our good fortune that we have in our lives. It shows us how to move beyond our limits so we can realize the amount of potential and the opportunity that's available to us. It rules travel, um, culture, spirituality, language, and education. It is a gaseous planet that sees the big picture in everything. Now, while Jupiter is in the pioneering sign of Aries, expect that there's going to be plenty of energy for travel, meeting challenges head first. Aries is independent and energetic. Combine this energy with Jupiter's expansive thought and vision. And this is you having the ability to widen your perspectives. It's to dive in on a personal level and focus on yourself. It is, Aries is the first sign, it's full of fire, it wants to dive in head first, it thinks about itself. And so this is you um, walking boldly into uncharted territory, taking risk, succeed, fail, learn, repeat, um, using this time to open up some opportunities in your life, to grow yourself, to expand your mind, your thoughts. And this is in the area of, of money and values and property and feelings about yourself and your, uh, your self-worth, your cash, your property, things that you own, 
all of this is beautiful energy to manifest and grow. And you need to be thinking about growing your own nest egg, about what you can do to grow this area of your life. Then on May 15th and 16th, depending on the time zone, uh, we're going to have a full moon lunar eclipse in this deep and watery sign of Scorpio. So eclipses. Eclipses are times of alignment. The goal of an eclipse is to remind us of our life's purpose. It brings fast paced shifts, shocking revelations, sudden endings, quick beginnings. There are realignment meant to put us back on track in life where we have veered off. Now, Scorpio's energy is highly intuitive and it rules eighth house themes. So Scorpio is a fixed water sign that's very fluid. It rules sexuality, shared resources, debt, and mystery, um, and taxes. So the, this eclipse in Scorpio is showing you what you need to release from your life if you want to live in alignment with what your true values are. Scorpio is the deepest of the water signs. It is psychic. It is private. It is loyal. It is protective. And this, all of this energy is what you have and is causing resistance from fulfilling your collective and your soul intentions that you need to move away from this fixated Scorpio energy on the past South node and focus on getting over your fear of the unknown, where you need to work to resolve these, uh, this birth, death, rebirth cycle. This full moon is part of an 18 month cycle. The previous solar eclipse that we had two weeks prior, um, was about what is growing. And this lunar eclipse is a winding down or eclipsing out in six month increments over the next 18 month period. So what do you need to release because of these burdens? Well, this is in your ninth house and it covers higher education, higher thought, foreign people, foreign travel, foreign food, connecting with others, teaching, um, teaching you as a teacher, and how do you do your work? Getting educated, your learning journey. School of any kind may come to an end or you may begin a brand new path for this education. Writing, publishing, speaking, you're going to have a message to share. This is you expanding your horizons to make it happen. New projects, uh, publishing projects, uh, completing or launching a book. Um, going to an international venue, traveling to or working or networking with people from other countries, ideas of solutions and solving problems with a different mindset. Think of a, the, 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 the hive mentality, new viewpoints, new optimism, um, a new belief system or leaving a path, new philosophy or seeing something in a different light. Um, working at a church or a spiritual focus, uh, I'm sorry, sp spiritual work will, will come into focus, new resources in spirituality, um, a new tool or a travel or a project that is pushing you outside of your comfort zone, uh, teaching and learning, taking the knowledge that you have and sharing it with others, like a book, a blog, teaching. This eclipse can give you a way to use your knowledge for creative flow, different cultures, languages, people that you share these experiences with. Um, you may experience where your personal beliefs may be tested. Uh, your thirst for adventure or learning may now come into focus and be narrowed. This time you may, um, that may have you making a plan to have more fun. Uh, you want to change directions. And this is you taking a leap of faith. There may be something, uh, an important beginning or an important culmination, like a graduation in education. Students uh, becoming a teacher moment. This could be you become the stu student becoming the teacher moment. If you're in a, if you're in business, education, or in a writer, this is a time of connecting and reaching a wider audience. All right. Then on May 20th, 
On May 20th, the sun that represents our ego and our soul, it enters the shape-shifting sign of Gemini. Now, Gemini is the third astrological sign in the zodiac. It is a mutable air sign. Gemini represents duality, the exchange of ideas and communication. It's very adaptable. It's very flexible. Therefore, while the sun is in Gemini, you're going to be able to convey your thoughts and your ideas with ease. You're going to have, um, you're going to be flexible in your opinions and like you're going to have one way that you want to do something. And as you get more information, you might change your mind and it's going to be okay because your intellect is going to be strong. The ideas are going to be backing it up with logic. You're going to have the power to persuade, teach, and be creative. Then on May 24th, on May 24th, Mars, the planet of ambition, passion, energy, and fire. It enters its home sign of Aries, and it's going to join up with Jupiter. Now, our energy is going to be spontaneous, so you're going to be, uh, think about it as impulsive, and you're going to be having this competitive spirit, and your goal is going to be to win. So you're going to be direct and, like I said, impulsive. At this time, you're going to be looking for what you can accomplish confidently, and this is in your house of finances, money, what you are, what you value. Then last on May 30th, uh, there's going to be this new moon in the mutable sign of Gemini. So this is going to be a time of a lot of transition going on. New moons represent fresh starts, clean slates, new beginnings, and a time to plant seeds for the future. Gemini can be nervous and impulsive energy that wants to create. This is um, an excellent time to improve on your communication skills, to begin a project that involves writing or communication or speaking or um, something creative. To carve out time to socialize and enjoy others is a perfect thing to do at this time. And take time to consciously tune in and listen to create a deeper connection with those that you are communicating with. Thank you for listening and watching this video. If you would like to receive updates as soon as they come out, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And make sure you share this with your friends who you think might benefit from this information. You can also find me on Facebook where I offer uh, personal updates um, and chart readings on occasion when there's a new moon and a full moon. And if you would like to receive updates as soon as they come out through the email, you can sign up for my newsletter at willowgracemystic.com. I would love to hear your thoughts on how this energy is manifesting in your life in the comments below. I heart you.